In October of 2022, Fender CEO Andy Mooney did an interview with Entrepreneur.com and Music Radar ran an article based off this interview. Fender's CEO says company finding out half of new guitar players are female was a complete shocker. And it reminded me of that time a few years back when Fender lied to the whole world. To start this off, we have to go back to 2018 to probably the most publicized Fender press release ever. It gained articles from Forbes, Billboard, Rolling Stone, Loudwire, Guitar World, Guitar.com, The Independent, the BBC, and a whole lot more. The press release was about the results of a survey Fender had done, and we only really need to look at the first point, because that's what pretty much everybody else did too. Women continue to define the emerging guitar market, accounting for 50% of all beginners and aspirational players. Now that would be pretty cool, it genuinely would be. I actually think it's quite a shame that it's just not accurate in any way and is only being used as a marketing tactic. And look, it's not news that sometimes brands manipulate statistics to suit their marketing, and 9 out of 10 dentists agree with me. But the job of a journalist is to cut through to the truth, and not just reword a press release. However, it seems like quite a few people didn't get that memo. One of the most important things about a survey is how it's done, the methodology, because there are so many variables and factors that can skew and change with the outcome that showing how you got your findings is just as important as the findings themselves. This wall of text was Fender's first press release on the topic, and out of all of that and multiple paragraphs on Fender Play, they awarded us with a whopping one sentence on how the survey was conducted. I mentioned that this was their first press release because in their second and widely more publicised version, this sentence didn't even make it. And while one sentence is shockingly little information to publish about a survey, in this instance it does tell us enough to question the validity of the results. In spring slash summer 2018, Fender commissioned a quantitative and qualitative research project with Denver-based Egg Strategy that gathered responses from 500 aspiring and beginner players from the US and UK. Now 500 people isn't exactly a whole lot, and it's certainly not enough to base the entirety of the UK and US markets off. A larger sample size would garner more accurate results, and it does make me question that if I, a random YouTuber, can do a poll and get 10,000 guitar players' opinions, why can Fender, arguably the largest guitar company in the world, only get 500? And then of course, what does Fender constitute as a beginner? Is it a week playing? A month? Six months? A year? They don't say. Gets worse though. With a representative mix of gender, ethnicity, and age. A representative sample is a subset of the population that seeks to accurately reflect the characteristics of a larger group. For example, a classroom of 30 students with 15 males and 15 females could generate a representative sample that might include 6 students, 3 male and 3 female. But like with this example, you have to be at least acutely aware of the overall population that you're trying to portray accurately. If Fender were trying to accurately represent the overall population of the world, where it's roughly 50% male, 50% female, then this would make sense. But the point of this survey is not to try and accurately represent the population of the planet, but instead to represent the population of beginner and aspiring guitar players, in which they've predetermined the outcome before the survey is even administered. In simple terms, you specifically asked beginner and aspiring players for this survey, meaning that you knew who these people that you were asking the survey questions were. You weren't asking random members of the public or random guitar players, you had to know who they were before you put this survey to them. And these people were specifically chosen with their gender in mind. You asked 250 men and 250 women exactly, and your study showed that 50% of the people that you asked were women. Well, yeah. Now I think that alone should be enough to cast a significant shadow of doubt on this whole operation. Actually, just the lack of general information about the survey should be enough to do that. But seeing as we're talking about data, YouTube says that 77% of the people watching this channel are not subscribed. So do me a favour and fix that. If you're not subscribed, subscribe so you can see more videos. But anyway, let's say that these results are true and they're accurate and represent the market. I don't believe this, but let's just say that they are. This means that Fender commissioned and likely paid through the nose to get this information. And let's call it what it is, if it was true, groundbreaking information. That could be used to change the industry forever. 
Remember Fender, don't just own Fender. They've got Squire, Jackson, Charvel, Gretsch. They license EVH. So with this information, if used correctly, they could quietly poise these brands to take over the market in just a few short years, leaving all the competitors scrambling to catch up. But instead, they didn't do anything quietly. They made sure that everybody knew. They were shouting from the rooftops. Fender's CEO was doing interviews with NME about it. Now that to me seems like a very strange and unusual thing to do. But then again, the company that Fender used to perform this research wasn't just your regular run-of-the-mill consumer research group. They're a brand strategist, a marketing company, and certainly a very good one. This study resulted in a worldwide free advertising campaign for Fender Play in every publication that you can think of. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait, the company that's currently facing a class action lawsuit for price fixing might not have the customer's best interests at heart? Yes. So, I think we've established that the information that we're looking at is, at the very least, on shaky ground. Did any press look at it like this? Annoyingly, no. Even more annoyingly, it's actually being used as an undeniable statistic in other studies and several new articles years later. And here's another bit that's annoying. If 50% of new guitar players were women, that would be cool. And if and when that does eventually happen. If someone reports on that with an actual accurate study that represents things, it'll always be viewed now as old news, because Fender said it years ago. And in the new interview with Fender CEO that I referenced at the beginning of this video, Andy Mooney said, Everybody had an opinion, but nobody had any data. So we gathered it, and out of that came five insights that guide everything we've done since. So I'm left here seeing only two options as to what's going on. Option one is the option that we would pick if we believed everything that Fender say. And that is that Fender, a company that makes over 150 million annually, is basing everything that they do off a study that was performed with just 500 people. That is nothing. What kind of a multi-million dollar company bases everything they do off that? I think that makes Fender look very stupid. And to be truthful, I don't think they are. I hold them in much higher esteem. I think they're a smart company that know exactly what they're doing. And I think when they hired Egg Strategy to do this survey, they had a plan. According to Egg Strategy, in a blog post written about the collaboration years later, Fender contacted them and started working with them when their guitar sales were down. Egg Strategy claimed that this signaled the death of rock and roll. I would claim that it signaled that Fender had been making slight variations of the same guitar for 60 years and have kind of flooded the second-hand market. But if guitar sales are down and you're a guitar company, you need another product to sell, and pretty quick. And there's no product that better appeases a shareholder than a subscription-based one. Thanks, Netflix. Introducing Fender Play. Fender Play. Well, with Fender Play. Well, with Fender Play. Fender Play. Ditch YouTube, get Fender Play. And if we remember back to those press releases about this survey, there was one thing pushed more than anything else. Fender Play. Even the images attached at the end of the press release are listed in the file names when you try and save them as Fender Play. I believe Fender are a smart company and use these incredibly inaccurate statistics to get articles written everywhere advertising their new product that would save the company. But maybe I'm wrong. I could be. Maybe the entire company is based off this one very poorly executed survey of 500 people. It's not out of the question. Fender have just released a new line of premium Fender fedoras because the first one just wasn't enough. So that's the video. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.